The first thing we've got to do when we are coming up with these rules is decide from what universe of rules are we talking about. Let me give a specific example. So let's say we all have a different problem, right? So this problem is going to be a two-dimensional problem. And the problem is to categorize items based on these two variables, okay? So this is one of the x's, the values in x, and this is another value in x. So x is a two-dimensional point, all right? And what we're trying to do is to categorize. We're categorize, categorizing either to be uh, x's or o's. So this is a bunch of our label data. And we've also got some O's. And so what we can do is, right as way as we could deal with this, but let's say we're going to create a function of some sort. And we're going to say that this function, if you're above the function, you're an O. And if you're below the function, you're an X. So for example, we could come up with that function. So we could say F equals whatever this function is, okay? So maybe this looks kind of like a quadratic. So it's some ax squared plus bx plus c for some a, b, and c. Our universe of possible functions we could have decided ahead of time was quadratics. Or we could have decided it's all degree less than or equal to 10 polynomials. We could have decided it's linear, in which case we couldn't have got this function, right? One thing I want you to notice that f is parameterized on a, b, and c. Okay? So we could actually say something like this. Theta is the combination of a, b, and c. So these are the parameters for this function, or we often call them weights, okay? So, and then we can really look at f is a function of both theta and x. So it's uh, basically f for some particular a, b, and c, and some particular x, that is our function. What learning consists of is figuring out what these a, b's, and c's are. So ahead of time, we've decided f is of this particular form. It's going to be an ax squared plus bx plus c. And the job of machine learning and supervised learning is to come up with what are the actual values of a, b, and c that best capture this such that we can correctly determine whether a particular point in this two-dimensional space should be labeled with an x or labeled with an o. Okay? The idea is, once we've done the training, we come up with this theta, and we can then look at any arbitrary two-dimensional point and say, well, if it's below f, then we're going to say it's an x, and if it's above f, we're going to say it's an o. And according to this data, that would work pretty well.